Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, to be honest, uh, Honorable Presiding Member, I take part in this uh, debate quite reluctantly. Reluctantly because uh, the Defence Ministry uh, is a subject that is uh, very polarising. It's uh, polarising when you hear speeches, not only in this House, <clears throat> but even when you consider opinions outside this House, it's polarising on ethnic lines. And on that basis, uh, the tragedy is that this House has deteriorated in its conduct to such a point where differing opinions are not respected, differing opinions are not allowed to be voiced, uh, and uh, one then in that backdrop has to ask the question whether there is any point in uh, speaking. But despite that, it is my duty uh, by the people who elected me uh, to express uh, certain views, uh, which I will endeavour to do. <clears throat> Honourable Presiding Member, in uh, May 2009, the date was the 16th. I was approached by the LTT's political head, at that time Mr. Nadesan, and uh, uh, Mr. Pulitervan, who was in charge of the Peace Secretariat, to approach the government of the day. There were nearly 150,000 to 100,000 people in LTT-controlled areas on the 16th of May 2009. And the LTT's position was that if the government was not approached and if the LTT's wish to save those lives of civilians was not expressed and conveyed, those lives will be lost. And on that basis, I contacted the then minister, uh, Mr. Basil Rajapaksa, on numerous occasions on the 16th from about 4 o'clock in the afternoon till about 10 in the night. I think we must have discussed ten times the modalities with regards to how those civilians could be brought across. Eventually, with the Defence Ministry consultation, it was agreed around eight o'clock in the night that um, uh, Mr. Basil Rajapaksa and myself will personally go to Vanni, uh, along with two bishops that the government and we will agree upon, uh, who will oversee the whole uh, process by which these civilians will come across. And this agreement was reached at about 8 o'clock on the 16th, pending the Security Council approval which was to take place on the next day because uh, His Excellency President Mahindra Rajapaksa was away in Jordan uh, for the non-aligned movement uh, uh, meeting uh, and he was only returning on the 17th morning. When he was to return he was supposed to go into a National Security Council meeting immediately and approval was supposed to be sought and we were to be ready to go to Vanni to ensure that those civilians be brought across. Now, it was 150,000 to 100, and I make those large numbers, there is a discrepancy of nearly 50,000 because it was almost impossible to give a safe number. But those numbers were massive by any stretch of imagination by any stretch of imagination. And at about 11 o'clock, at about 11 o'clock after the National Security Council meeting had started, at about 11 o'clock when I was looking at the TV, the government's channels, Rupa Wahini and ITN announced that all civilians had been brought across. About 50,000 civilians had come across and that, that there was no more civilians in LTT controlled areas. I panicked because I know that when the war started in LTT controlled areas, there were over 460,000 civilians. These were government figures. These were government figures. And gradually, from people coming out, as well as deaths, the calculations made by not only the TNA, but all other responsible institutions that were monitoring the war, knew that the numbers, even at the very end, were large. The Honorable Saratvira Sekhar, the other day asked, where was I? That was my job. I was a member of parliament at that time. And I was trying to, in some way, 
use my privileges as a member of parliament and my contacts with the government to try and safeguard those civilians. The LTT was willing to allow them to be brought across. But that did not happen. That did not happen. From the inception of the war, please don't disturb, Honorable Minister. You, please yes. don't disturb. The I Minister only have a very short Sekhar. time. No, no, I'm trying. No, no, the thing is, uh, now, no, the thing is, uh, when you are when when, no, when you are when you are trying to mislead this now, no, no, when you are trying to mislead this uh, assembly, no, no, you can't mislead them because the entire nation is listening. When you are trying to mislead, it is my duty, being a, being an officer in the war, right? It is my it is my duty to tell you that correct it. And about three hundred thousand people were used as human shield by Prabhagan. Are you going to dispute that fact? Are you going to dispute that fact? Right. So you are telling you are telling lies. Yes, Mr. Bonamalu, you can continue to be with your speech. In my, in my submissions, you must not disturb me like this. Be responsible, please. Yes, Mr. Sanspansika. I am not arguing with you. I am giving you some more details. 19th April, we attacked the LTT line at Pudumatalan, took 120,000 civilians out. They are all recorded everything. They were, hold on. Then on the, see, let me finish. Listen, listen. 16, 16 night. Again, May si Yes, Honorable si Member Pamnambalam, you can continue with no, your speech. If this is going to happen, then I might just stop speaking. If you are going to allow, to, if you are going to allow these members to, to disturb me. We are running short of please time, yes. You can finish speaking. it in a jiffy, yes. There is yes, no Mr. point allowing me to speak in this way. All right, uh, Mr. Sanat Fonseca. 16 night. Nobody came, you never came. Army attacked the Mulatu uh, line and took 85,000 out. Yes. So these are the, these are the facts. Right, Mr. Ponnambal, you can continue with your speech. So 460,000 more civilians were in LTT controlled areas when this war began. But the government from the very inception was saying that there were only 70,000 civilians in LTT controlled areas. You can't deny that. Food and medicine were sent for only 70,000 people. Only 70,000 people, uh, Honorable Chairperson. That is the truth. That is what the government did. And eventually 320,000, eventually 320,000 people came out. They were kept in Manic Farm and various other places. So when you have a situation, Honorable Presiding Member, where a government, where a government lies about the numbers, where the government sends only a fraction of the population's worth of food and medicine in a war situation, what is the intention? Even on the 16th of May 2009, I personally am witness when I contacted the Honorable Basil Rajapaksa and conveyed to the government that the LTT was willing to lay down arms to allow the civilians across safely. That war was not stopped. What is the intention that you can derive from that? Isn't it the intention to destroy in whole or in part? Isn't it that the intention that is being demonstrated? This is the reality that is known to the Tamil people, honorable presiding member. That is why I said this ministry is the most polarizing ministry to speak on. This is the reality that we live with, where over 164,000 people are unaccounted for. Unaccounted for. So when that is the situation, honorable presiding member, a responsible government, a responsible government, today, today honorable member from the opposition, the honorable member from the opposition stated, that over 52 senior members of the military don't get visas. Don't get visas to countries. Why? Why is it that, why is it that members so senior are being denied visas? Isn't it the duty of the government, therefore, if these senior members in fact are innocent, to prove their innocence? Isn't it in your interest to do that? Isn't that what we are asking? Have an inquiry. Agree to an international inquiry. You have nothing to hide, then why do you shy away? Don't do that. Don't do that because for as long as you shy away. Oh, for as long as you shy away. Honorable member. Yeah. 
Honorable member, LTT gave weapons to children, underage children, bombs and cyanide. Honorable Panambala. So for as long as you shy away, not only will your own image in the eyes of the international community be run down, but you will continue to polarize society within this own country. The Defense Ministry, Honorable Presiding Member, is so polarized that if, as far as the Tamils are concerned, you should change the name of the ministry. The ministry should be called Tamil Genocide Ministry or Anti-Tamil Ministry. That is how we feel. That is how we feel. Why do you deny that? The Honorable Sarak Veerasekara, he is now in charge of police. He stands up in this court, uh, in, this, in this house, and says that the honorable members of the TNA must be banned. He says that the honorable members of the TNA must be banned. Sumit Mantitumma. Mantitumma, Murad Sanjuda, Visheshan Maape Mantitumma, Adhas Daikko Amitane, Me Amatyaanshe Demala Jatiye Gatane Kana Amatyaanshe Nam Karan Dona Kila. Tumma Sampuro Jatiye Wadiya Purno. Ponamal Mantitumma, but my katal karganyan. The the, the Honorable Sarath Veera Sekra, the Honorable Sarath Veera Sekra stood up shamelessly, shamelessly, shamelessly. A man who is in charge of policing, a minister stands up and says that the TNA must be banned. They must be thrown out of this house. Is this what a minister who is in charge of policing says? The Honorable, the Honorable Mahinder Samarasinghe on the 23rd. On the 23rd, made a speech. The poor, the poor member, the poor member thought that he was praising. The poor member. Honourable member, you have two more president. minutes. The honourable Mahinda Samarasinghe boasted, boasted that President uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa didn't want to allow the civilians to come across when there were different countries, different individuals like myself trying to intervene to save those civilians. The honourable Mahinda Samarasinghe says he boasts saying that he did, President Rajapaksa didn't want the civilians to come across because Prabhakaran might escape. Because Prabhakaran might escape. For one man, you chose to destroy thousands and thousands of lives. That is what is called war crimes. That is what is called genocide, where you choose to destroy the lives in whole or in part. For God's sake, for God's sake, Honorable Member, please. For God's sake, the future of this country is going to get an inheritance of this culture, of this culture that should not be allowed. There are senior members in this, on this front bench. They are not racist. I know they are not racist. They are people who might have differing views. They are people who might have differing views. But at least they are not racist. But that cannot be said. That cannot be said of senior members who are being appointed today. Senior members who are being appointed today. And that too, and that too, to appointments, to appointments on security. On security and on public security. Can you, can you, are you allowing this language? Are you allowing this language? These are honorable member. These are not Chairman honorable Mantua. members. These are these are. Karuna kala mantra mala. You tomorrow katao karagani ani ida denna. Abri. But tomorrow ke avasaan minute tuva. Karuna kala mantra mala vaadi denna. So it is on this basis, honorable. Oh, Chairman Mantra. Diurundi lati enne. Me tomorrow diurundi lati enne kena apni sakya ati no. Mokal apni diurundi lati enne okkoma me rati. Diurundi me, api kal kau rut diurundi lagi, me tu mah di lagi, diurum me benda ni dia kata. Me kan me jangan mahar diurum me. Honorable Pon Nam Belum, please continue with your speech. Give me some of. Tar mantri tu mah lah, tu mah kata awak kerana ni tu mah tau minit tu ayat ni. Madam, the TNA, the TNA is willing to give me some of their time. I just want to make, I just want to make a few points. You call yourselves a defense yes, minister. Yes, Honorable Shridharan. You call yourselves a defense ministry for the whole country. Honorable Shridharan. Honorable Ponnambalam, please continue with your speech. Military, I, they've, they've given me some time, they've given me five minutes. 
The, the defense ministry has 20 divisions in this country. 20 divisions. Of the 20 divisions, honorable presiding members, 16 are based in the Northeast. 16 are based in the Northeast. There are six headquarters, four are based in the Northeast. Whose defense? Who is your enemy? You claim here that it is only the LTT that's your enemy. But it is the Tamil people that you're oppressing. Is this what you want to convey for generations and generations to come? For God's sake, think again. In order to pursue your chauvinistic and racist policies, you are creating precedents today that is going to curse this country. Curse it to the point, curse it to the point where you might quite well destroy us, but you will destroy ten, yourselves. I wish you had the balls to talk like this against the LTT when they were giving arms to children, when they were giving arms the to children. Honorable Ponambram, please continue. Thank you. Is this the precedent that you want to set? Because when you set this precedent, today it's the Tamils. Today it's the, rather yesterday it was the Tamils. Today it's the Muslims. Tomorrow it will be your own. It will be your own because the people who you consider your competition, you will turn against them. That will turn against them. That is the reality. This is a downward spiral, honorable presiding member. And if these members, and I, what I mean by these members and not the to sit at the back, if these senior members, members who have been in this house for decades, Members, members who are responsible, members who have the intelligence to meet, to meet you have only two more minutes. If these senior members fail in their duties today, as they are failing today, if they continue to fail like this, if they continue to fail like this, it is this country that will go to the dogs, that you can never prevent. I have been repeatedly stating, I have been repeatedly stating, I am an individual who was born and bred in Colombo. My friends are Sinhalese. I grew up with the Sinhalese. During the 83 riots, it was the Sinhalese people, like Mr. Ananda Vijayasekara, President's Council, like Mr. Kosala Vijayatilaka, President's Council, like Mr. Stanley Williams. These are the people who saved us. Those were Sinhalese people, those are the Sinhalese people that I knew. But quite honestly, even 10 years ago when I came as a member, even when the LTT was there, this was not the culture. This was not the culture, madam. People were willing to listen. People were willing to answer. Even though they disagreed, were willing to answer with decorum. But it's a disaster what has come before this country. Make no mistake. You can by all means continue to disenfranchise the Tamil people. You might even succeed in your continued systematic genocide. You might even succeed in totally dismantling our identity. There might come a time that we can't even claim that we ever had a place on this island. But you will leave a legacy that will destroy yourselves. Mark my words. Honorable member, you are please find out. Thank you. Garu Saratur Sagar Matama. Not the God then got the May, you dig any Tama Sava, dear Prakasha Matama Karpunisa, Mamahamuda, Hitopakan Katia, you the Aram Visit Avasana Dakwa, Matame Karnakalavasta, the 